Welcome to the installation of the Backflow Lifting Station EcoLift XL and the Equipment Shaft System from Kessel. Please read the safety instructions in the operating manual and remember that this video is only a schematic representation and a supplement to the operating manual and not a replacement. Therefore, make sure to read the operating manual carefully before starting work on the system. First, we dig the pit. The diameter should be at least one meter wider than the bottom of the equipment shaft in the required range. Attention, the shaft may not exceed a height of five meters and may not stand in more than three meters of groundwater. Please also make sure to observe the correct slope angle in the instruction manual. Now we level the pit floor and add approximately 30 centimeters of gravel to form a layer which we then compress to prevent any further dropping of the system. We then insert the floor element and secure its position with either lean or wet mix concrete. Next, we connect the two inlet and outlet pipes, DN150, making sure there is a continuous incline. In this step, we install the pressure line above and beyond the backflow level and connect the individual line parts by means of a hot plate or electro welding process. Now we fill the pit with a suitable filler material in accordance with the installation and operating manual until the floor element is firmly held in place. In the next step, we will discuss the assembly of the shaft. In doing so, we place a grease-free seal on the mounting slot of the equipment module and strike it with a rubber hammer crosswise at four points and then around the entire circumference in one direction. Attention, the seal may not be buckled or stretched. Then we grease the top of the seal with a commercial lubricant for sewer construction and put on the next intermediate piece or the cone. Attention! The recess of the upper element must be placed on the mandrel of the underlying element. Now we press the connecting surfaces together with a pair of pliers and strike the locking wedges crosswise into the surrounding eyelets with a hammer. We repeat these steps until the desired height is reached. Make sure the top section seal is in the correct position. We install the clamping rings for securing the top section in accordance with the installation and operating manual. Next, we drill a DN70 feed through into a tapping surface or a tapping point in the cone or in one of the intermediate pieces and then insert the appropriate feed through seal. Then we insert the ventilation pipe by placing it on the ventilation fitting of the floor element. Thereafter, we install the ventilation pipe over and beyond the rooftop of the building. Now, we drill a DN100 feed through into a tapping surface or a tapping point and then insert the feed through seal. We insert the cable tube into the feed through and connect it to the switching device. Attention! The cable tube must be installed at an incline. In the next step, we cover the equipment shaft. Then we fill the pit layer by layer. Fill and compress layer by layer with a suitable filler material in accordance with the installation and operating manual. We use acid-free fitting grease for all subsequent steps. Before you continue, the shaft should be cleaned. First, we remove the construction period protection cover of the pump mountings and fasten the pumps with the bolts provided. The tightening torque may not exceed 7 newton meters. Further information can be found in the installation and operating manual. Then we install the alarm sensor. For this purpose, we plug the optical probe with the red adapter into the designated mounting with the red mark. We connect the hose for pneumatic level detection to the dip tube. We undo the two violet-colored closing caps on the backwater unit 
and then screw on the probe as described in the instruction manual. Color markings on the cable ends facilitate subsequent connection to the switching device. Next, we move the locking levers for the valves into the closed position and fasten both the drive motors, each with four bolts. The cable end of the motor for the redundancy closure is marked with a yellow flag. We then route all cables from the equipment shaft through the cable tube to both the switching devices. Attention! Any of the following work may only be carried out by electricians with the required qualifications. First, we connect the pump cables to the Comfort Plus main switch. Then we connect the pressure hose to the main switching device. Now we connect the signal line of the red alarm probe to the main switching device. We mark the connection with a red flag. Now we connect the control line of the motor for the backflow valve to the main switching device. We connect the line to the motor of the redundancy flap and the one with the yellow probe to the redundancy control unit. We mark the connection of the probe with a yellow flag. Now, on the main control unit Comfort Plus, we install an additional connection on the right side and from there install a communication line to the redundancy control unit. In the last installation step, we connect the entire system to the power supply. The two control units have to be connected to two separately fused electrical circuits. First, plug in the redundancy control cabinet after which we turn the switch of the main control unit to the I on position. This starts initialization. The LEDs light up in about 5 seconds and all electrical components are automatically checked. After a few seconds, the menu will be displayed with the language selection. We follow the instructions on the display and enter all of the required data. The type of system and the maintenance interval can be found in the operating manual or in the product description. In the last step of initial commissioning, we carry out the function check according to the tasks listed on the maintenance card.